Okay, good morning, good morning. Welcome back, happy Thursday. Guess which page of the packet we go to today? The last page. So let's flip to the last page, which is 42. And while we're opening to the last page of the last packet, just a couple of announcements. First of all, um, how many folks are intending to come back to GCC in the spring but haven't registered yet? Okay, so I'm talking to you here uh, uh, and tell your friends if they haven't registered yet that we are strongly encouraging folks to register sooner rather than later. Uh, this email came to me, came to all the employees from the second person in charge. Bob is our president and Cher is our second in command. And she says that uh, we're really trying to get a good handle on how many students are coming and how many students are going to be in each class and decisions are being made about whether to open another section or close a section that's already there. So if you know that you are coming back, we're really strongly encouraging you to register sooner rather than waiting for you know January 19, 2021, 20, just the last few days of the semester to help GCC do some planning. We also recognize some folks have a health hold. So if you have a health hold, come talk to me right after class and I will tell you how to fix it. Uh, if you're not sure about what your financial aid award will be next spring, go to the financial aid office and make an appointment to see either Amy or Linda or somebody else down there. They'll tell you exactly what your financial aid package looks like for the spring. And also know that uh, the bill, the financial aid bill for the spring isn't due when you register. It's due sometime mid-January, okay? So you can register now without any obligation financially. Any questions on this? Okay, now let's come to the calendar. So uh, today is December 13. It's our review day for test number three. Last class, we reviewed the cryptography, both days of cryptography. I think it went pretty well. Today, we can talk about the other four topics that are on the test, Fibonacci numbers, population growth. Those were the things with the two different sets of two equations. You guys remember we had exponential growth and we had linear growth, and each of these had a recursive model and an explicit model, so that was that day. And then fractals in nature, we talked about the Koch snowflake, and we wrote some tables and did lots of numbers, and then finally drawing things in perspective. So those are the four topics we can look at today, which is our last day of class. Uh, by the way, Monday is the last day of classes. So if you have a Friday class tomorrow, you go. And if you have Monday classes, you go. But this is the last Tuesday, Thursday class. Uh, our test, our third test, is coming up Tuesday morning at 10.30. Notice that it is different from when we start class normally, okay? You're welcome to get here at 9.30. Probably the class is taking a test in here will be annoyed if you come in. That will be our class, so come at 10.30 on Tuesday, all right? And I know that it's a two-hour window for tests. Like, our window is 10.30 to 12.30. It's not a two-hour test. It's the same length the other ones have been. So hour, hour and 15 should be fine. Uh, again, uh, Project 2, I have given back all the Project 2s that I've already gotten. So if you want to do a revision, you hand it to me on Tuesday. If, uh, if you haven't turned it into me yet, then go ahead and turn it into me on Tuesday. And I really strongly encourage you to make sure you turn something in on Tuesday. I don't know what state the Project 2s are for the people that I haven't heard anything uh, from about Project 2. I don't know where you guys are. I'm hoping you've made some progress. Even if you haven't thought for a moment about Project 2, don't simply ignore that assignment. It's worth 15% of your grade, which means that if you are currently at a C average, 75, if you get a zero on a 15% assignment, you go down to a 60, which is borderline between passing and failing. Actually, 63 is my borderline. So you go to 60 and you are failing and you're retaking this course. Don't end up retaking this course because you didn't feel like doing one assignment, which was worth 15% of your grade, okay? All right, any questions on the calendar? All right, then let's take a look at page 42. Uh, we start up here in the middle, review day for the test. Uh, let's just talk about the subjects covered. Can we start with Patty? We're going to read from Fibonacci. Okay, thank you. Stephanie? Thank you. Danny? Okay, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and cross off one of the topics in here. We looked at number of sides, we looked at uh, length, we looked at perimeter. We made lots of charts about those things. One thing that we didn't, not every group really had a chance to look at was the area question. 
So go ahead and cross that off. Okay, we'll go to Kristen. Linear. It's the very last page. We'll come back to Kristen. Can we go to Grace? The linear. Okay, thank you. We'll go back to Kristen. Okay, thank you. And then Lucas. Cryptography. Okay, so we had four of these guys. Make sure that you know what each of these things means. Actually, there's a fifth one in here. We've got to add something. IFID. Add that. Five different ones. So let's be clear on which one is which. Caesar, it's always the same. You always move three forward. That's how you do Caesar. If you're encoding, decoding, it's three backwards, but it's always three. Make sure you know which way is which, right? Because that's going to completely change your answer. Now, if you are decoding and you go the wrong way, you'll get gobbledygook and you'll probably say, all right, well, what if I try going the other direction? But if you are encoding, you're not going to know whether your gobbledygook is the right gobbledygook, right? So write down which way it is, right? Caesar goes three forward in one direction, but three backwards when you're decoding. A shift uh, cipher is just any generic one. You remember the other day? Uh, I wrote here, shift everything forward 11 places. That's it. So it's it's something where I'm going to just give you a number you haven't seen, but you should be able to shift in either direction as far as I say. Again, probably using the cutouts of the alphabet will help you there. I'm going to jump to bifid because that's the next one we did in order in class. That was the one with the 5x5 five five grid, right? Bifid, you'd put all the letters into this grid with no repeating. And then there was a process. And to be honest, I think that that process is probably even more complicated than the Visionaire and Auto Key ones. I really think the Bifid one is the toughest, especially the decoding part. Really think you got to practice with that. Make sure you're clear on it. Then we had Visionaire and Auto Key. Those were both almost exactly the same. These were the big, long, rectangular tables. And we ended up uh, converting all the letters into numbers. And for the Visionaire, we had this keyword that you would just repeat over and over again. And then you'd either add the stuff or you'd subtract the stuff, depending on whether you're encoding or decoding. Make sure you know which way is which. Um, and then finally, you'd have some gobbledygook at the bottom. Auto key was exactly the same, except instead of repeating the keyword over and over again, what do we do? Keyword first, just once. And then the original phrase goes after, right? That's in the encoding direction. In the decoding direction, you don't know the original phrase. So you put your keyword once, you go down the table, you start to get the beginning of the original phrase to start to make sense of something. That then goes next to the keyword and then you trickle down and start moving over. Grace. Bifid was the five by five grid. We'd put all the alphabet into the grid and then do a bunch of crazy stuff. Okay, so, 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 resources. Uh, we are now back to Haley. Okay, so I know that some folks cut but then discarded the alphabet thing. So I think there's actually one more, is there another option here? What's page four? Two, this page here. Yeah, so it's probably not in your packet anymore, but you turned this in to me for homework. So if you still have that piece of paper from homework, feel free to cut that out and then you can have it with you on the test. That said, you don't need to bring anything to the test with you. I am going to give you a printout, uh, a photocopy of this page right here, which is pages four and five, or five and six, I should say. So you'll have a plenty of five by five grids. You'll have both of the alphabet things. You can cut them out on the test day. I'll bring a pair of scissors. And then on the next page, you have plenty of, uh, you have the alphabet number thing. And then down here, uh, lots of copies of this guy, all right? So what it's going to look like on the test is that, um, you know, like a test question will say, uh, use the bifid and encode this phrase. 
but I'm not going to give you the five by five grid there. I mentioned this the other day. I, I want you to be able to associate the word bifid with the process and the five by five grid. And if I just say, hey, everybody, we're going to do a bifid example and I give you this as like a blank thing right in that question, then I'm kind of telling you exactly what the, the method is. So I need you to know the name and what it goes to. So what that means is I'm going to say use bifid and then there'll just be a big blank space. And then on a separate piece of paper, you're going to have this photocopied thing for you to say, oh, BIFID is the one with the 5x5 five five grid. All right? And what you're going to do is you're just going to say, all right, so if uh, let's say that the BIFID question is number 5A, uh, and you decide you're going to put it right here, you're just going to put right next to it 5A, and you're going to do all your work right here. You're going to turn this piece of paper into me, and I will hunt around and find where the different parts of the problem are. Okay? But just label it with the question. Yeah. Grace. So, these No, the shift is just an ordinary uh, take every letter in the alphabet and move it forward eight places. Just shift them. So that one you're just going to use the little cutouts and line them up. Yeah. So the shift you're giving us any number? Yeah, I'll give you some number. I'll say go forward this many, or I'll say go backward this many. Yeah, exactly. Set A up like the 11th spot. Okay. Yeah. All right, so is everybody clear on, on what I'm going to give you? I'll give you this piece of paper, but I'm not going to give you any clue as to which one goes with which method, right? It's your job to know that association. Okay, so that is that. Uh, and then I think we're... Uh, you you could do one where the alphabet is backwards. We're, we're not going to, but you could. You know. All right. So uh, we had all that. Uh, it says here you have one and a half hours for the test. Let's cross that off. You have one and a quarter hours for the test. Should be plenty. It's an hour long test. Hour fifteen should be fine. If there are still people here and we want to go an hour and a half, I'm sure that's fine too. Um, and if you have any kind of accommodations or other special test needs, talk to me today. Uh, number three, uh, we've already talked about the date and time. Everybody clear? Tuesday, December, December what? Let's just double check. December 18. At 10.30. Okay, any general questions on anything right now? Grace. I don't have anything as of today. I've, I've got a spreadsheet that's set up to calculate it right after each test. Yeah, um, but so here's, a, here's something I can offer. So you can wait until your report card comes in or, or until things get posted on uh, my GCC. Uh, I don't know when the grades roll, but it's it's quite a ways after Tuesday because, the, yeah, it's a while. Um, but if you email me at any point next week or the week after, hey, Ian, can you tell me what I got on the final and the project and my course grade? I'll, I will tell you all of those things. Just acknowledge that I, I don't have internet at home, so it might be a few days depending on when I get to a computer. You can email me your project. If I have time to grade it and turn it around so that you have time to do a revision, then that works for me. But again, I don't have email over the weekend. Um, uh, but I will, I will turn stuff around as quickly as I can so people have an opportunity to revise. Okay? Everybody clear on that? If you email me your project, you may have an opportunity to do a revision. I'll get it back to you as soon as I can. Melissa? Oh, share the candy canes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's very nice of you. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so uh, one other thing, one other thing. Yeah, so um, can you guys go back, I think, five pages. We're going to here. 38. Back to page 38.
<laughs> thank you, Melissa. I'm good, thank you. Okay. So on page 38, let's come back up here for just another minute. On page 38 begins the study guide for test number three. It should look familiar. It's got the same format as the study guides we saw, we saw for the first couple of tests. So here is a much more detailed list of things that I'd like you to be able to do. It's not just a list of topics. It's a detailed list of things I'd like you to be able to do. For example, number nine, I would like you to be able to put a drawing in perspective or determine whether a picture is drawn with respect to proper perspective. So this is a very nice checklist. A lot of people, I think, ignore it. It's a bunch of text. You don't have to read it, and that's fine. But I think it's a really good study aid. So as you are preparing for the test, go through this list. Anything you know how to do, put a check mark. Put a check mark. And stuff that you don't know how to do, circle, question mark, something. Somehow, I think this is a really good way to diagnose. This is page 38. Really good way to diagnose where you are as you prepare for that third test. On the next page, starts the sample test problems. And so for the next hour, you guys are just going to work in your groups on whichever ones of these you feel like. Don't feel like you need to start at number one. This is page 39. You don't need to start at number one. You can skip around. You can find the questions that are about the topics that you found most challenging. And then the one last resource, same as we've had all semester, there are videos of me going through each and every one of those sample test problems up on YouTube. Maybe you could put a note on this page. This is how you search for these videos. It's that string right up there. 117 sample test three problem, and then you put a number like five, okay? No spaces, 117 sample test three problem five. And if we hit enter on that search, then you'll see not only does it come up with, um, with the actual video, move this there, uh, the actual video is this one down here, 2 minutes and 46 seconds, but there's also a playlist that it pulls up right up above, right? All of them are right there. Easy to find if you know how to find it. If you put spaces in, I don't think it'll find anything, so make sure you know how to find that. Yes? Ripped your what? Oh, uh, I have a copy here. I'll give it to you. Okay. All right, so uh, the only other thing I wanted to say... I think it's up here on my channel. All right, so I'm hoping, now I spent a lot of time making those videos for like every sample test uh, problem and for every one of my classes, I've got these videos. So it's taken a lot of time. And uh, right here, you can see we're up to 2,891 views. And I'm hoping to get to 3,000 by the end of the semester. So help me get there. This is just for my own benefit. I, I It's not monetized or anything, but, uh, but anyway, we're close. And I feel like we can get to 3,000. So you know the resources there. If you might find it useful, take advantage of it and uh, take a look at any of those videos. Okay, so for the rest of this period, you guys are starting someplace around page 39, and I'll put the flags out and help if I can. There is an answer key just in the Word document. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, so there's the answer key. Uh, also, um, on YouTube, not on YouTube, on uh, Moodle, um, I have, so if you want more than just answers and you don't feel like watching the video, there is a PDF of my solutions, like filled in just on the same exact page that you guys have. It's up on Moodle, okay? Everybody understand what I'm saying? Like, I solved these problems in the videos and then I saved it as a PDF, so you'll see my color solutions, not just uh, answers, if you go on to Moodle. Okay.